Galwr cynulliad i drefn ar eitem gyntaf yn agenda ni'r prynhawn yma yw cwestiynau i'r prif weinidog, a dwi'n galw ar Paul Davies i alw'r cwestiwn cyntaf. Uh, Diolch Llywydd, a wnaeth y prif weinidog datganiad am yr hyn y mae Llywodraeth Cymru yn ei wneud i wella gwasanaethau iechyd yn Sir Benfro? Fodd dynori a Llywodraeth Cymru i'w gwneud yn siwr bod bobl Sir Benfro yn cael gwasanaethau iechyd sy'n rhoi yr caniadau gorau posib i gleifion. Prif yn ei drog mae'r rheoli meddygfa wdig yn fy etholaeth i wedi cyflwyno heriau sylweddol ers peth amser bellach, ac mae wedi arwain at heriau o ran recrutio ac ar adegau mae mynediad i gleifion wedi bod yn broblem go iawn. O styried bod rhaglen llywodraethu eich llywodraeth yn ymrwymo i byrhau i wella mynediad at feddygfeydd, pa gymorth y gall a bydd y llywodraeth chi yn cynnig i cymuned fel wdig i ddod o hyd i ateb mwy sefydlog ar gyfer ei meddyg lleol? Wel, un o'r pethau'n neud wrth gwrs i'r sicrhau bod na ymgyrch i dynnu mwy o fyddag o'n tili mewn i Gymru, fyddwn na'n dechrau mis nesa. Ac wrth gwrs, i ystyried am hoff ffordd a llyff meddyg feidd i weithio yn ffordd y cynaliadwy yn y pen draw. Dyletswydd meddyg feidd wrth gwrs i recrutio yn y tro cyntach, fyddwn na'n annibynnol. Ond wrth gwrs, mae na gymorth iddyn nhw o'r byrddau iechyd er mwyn iddyn nhw i, i recrutio yn y pen draw. Uh, ond uh, nod y Llywodraeth byw sicrhau bod uh, mwy a mwy o fyddag o'n teulu eisiau dod i Gymru i weithio. Joyce Watson. Diolch Llywydd. First Minister, I'm delighted to learn on Monday that Hewildar University Health Board has been shortlisted for the highly respected Health Service Journal Award 2016 in the primary care innovation category for its innovation in community pharmacy triage and treat service, of which there are 17 pharmacies providing that service across Carmarthenshire, Pembrokeshire and Ceredigion, and plans for another nine by the end of this year. It will and should uh, play a very important role in reducing A&E attendances in the, the areas by providing treatment and advice to low-level need, including minor wounds, etc. And it will, of course, uh, reduce uh, pressures on much any needed services. So I ask you, First Minister, will you join me in congratulating the staff from Hewildar that have worked extremely hard at delivering this new, highly successful and innovative service and wish them well in November? Yes, I will. Of course, it's, uh, it's, uh, a, uh, it's very prestigious to be nominated for this uh, award. And it shows the kind of innovative thinking that we want to see in our health service that uh, not just benefits the system, but importantly benefits patients. Simon Thomas. Well, when a health board gets nominated for award and it's under level two intervention from the Welsh Government, you have to ask yourself what's going wrong. Um, the truth is that in Pembrokeshire, people's access to primary health care is dangerously affected by the fact that it takes up to two weeks to get an appointment with the doctor, the fact we don't have minor injuries units anymore, and uh, Tenby in particular is struggling to, uh, uh, to actually provide the kind of primary health care services I'm sure he, as the First Minister of Wales, wants to see. What further steps is, she, is, is he going to do now to ensure that the health board does actually step in when local GP practices are not recruited and are not able to provide the services we expect? Well, as we've done elsewhere in Wales, there will be occasions when practices are taken over by the health board and they will improve the service quite often. As the people of Prestatin, they will tell you that. On other occasions, other practices take over the running of the, uh, the service and with, uh, with great success. I'm surprised he um, uh, thinks the health service journal is something that should be ignored or there's something wrong with them, because it was the health service journal uh, that uh, it has been uh, responsible for uh, ensuring that this nomination uh, takes uh, place. And it is a widely read, it's a widely, it's a widely read journal. If he thinks that the journal is in some way useless, he can say so. The reality is that this is a very innovative scheme that has, uh, you know, this is a very innovative scheme that they have come forward and one to be welcomed. It's a shame he has not welcomed it. He asked a question particularly about Tenby. He had his chance to welcome it, he failed to do so. He mentioned about Tenby, well, he says he's not going to, he's not going to welcome something that Howell Var has done. Uh, and something that's been recognised elsewhere. As far as Tenby is concerned, he will know that there are plans that are far advanced to make sure that there is a walk-in GP service provided in that town, which will be hugely convenient, not just for those who live in the town, but for those who visit it. 
Davies. Question die, Susie Davies. Uh, Dear Chloe, uh, will the First Minister outline the Welsh Government's response to the current refugee crisis? Well, we continue to provide leadership and promote collaboration between stakeholders in Wales. We have established a task force and an operations board to drive delivery and to overcome any barriers. And we've also established a children's subgroup to work proactively to consider support required for emerging schemes. Uh, well, thank you for that, uh, First Minister. Uh, on Saturday, I joined a number of colleagues from here, actually, at Swansea's uh, Standards One rally. And although Swansea, along with Port Talbot, have managed to resettle a very modest number of refugees, most local authorities in Wales haven't. Now, Welsh Government and Assembly members have been clear that we want to welcome refugees here. And you announced your Syrian Vulnerable Person Resettlement Programme two and a half years ago. <coughs> Yet last month, we had only welcomed 112 refugees to Wales. Now, the UK government says it's secured the 20,000 places it's committed to. So what proactive steps have you taken to get more refugees here more quickly? And why have 13 councils taken no refugees at all? Well, you'll have to ask the UK government that. It's their responsibility when it comes to the resettlement of Your refugees. We've made steps. our position very, very clear in terms of what we will do to help them. It's right to say that the UK government has recently announced three children's resettlement schemes. I want Wales to play its part. Uh, to resettle vulnerable children refugees in the UK. I will be speaking to the WLGA chair on how we can continue to work with the Home Office and local government once further information around the scheme evolves. John Griffiths. First Minister, one of the issues to address to allow refugees in Wales to contribute fully to life here is to properly and adequately recognise the skills and qualifications that they possess. Will you take steps to ensure that that is the case for all refugees here in Wales? Well, absolutely. We need to make sure that those people who have skills uh, that are needed by our economy, by our health services, those skills are, are utilised. And certainly one of the issues that we want to explore uh, with the WLGA is how we can seek, under the Home Office actually, how we can identify those people in terms of the skills that they possess. Bethan Jenkins. Hey. Uh, First Minister, you've already mentioned uh, the children, but there are in fact 200 uh, children in the Calais um, area that are currently not being um, taken in by any government, and also in Lebanon and Syria um, as well, um, extra to the 200. Um, we've seen the horrific pictures on our screens over the summer, and quite frankly, um, the fact that we're not doing enough for those children is embarrassing. Um, they should not be in uh, such a position of trauma and be left on their own to fend uh, for their lives. I don't buy into this fear-mongering that they choose to go to Calais and that more will follow uh, because of us trying to help those unaccompanied uh, children. Uh, today, the world leaders are gathered in New York to discuss the refugee crisis. So will you join with me in asking the UK government to bring these 200 children to safety immediately? And I would ask also that you commit Wales to help in this unprecedented crisis by taking our fair share of unaccompanied children from the camps in the region as well as in Calais. And I'd appreciate you not telling us that the UK government is responsibility. What are you going to do, First Minister? Well, in November 2015, uh, we did establish the, the Syrian Refugee Task Force. We were way ahead of the game in terms of uh, other governments. Uh, we made it absolutely clear that Wales would take, uh, as she has put it, a fair share of refugees. The same is true of children, of course. The fact that the UK government now has three children's resettlement schemes is, is a welcome step in the right direction. And we want to make sure that Wales plays its full part in welcoming children who have quite often lost their parents, uh, children who have seen wars, children who have seen things in front of them that, that no, we would not want anybody, children or adults, to see. And we stand ready to help those children. Gareth Bennett. Uh, dear Llewyd, um, while I understand the wish of members here to facilitate the arrival of more refugees, we must also acknowledge that there is widespread concern in the UK at the number of economic migrants who are attempting to arrive in the UK under the guise of being refugees. Indeed, this will be about refugees. And what I would like to ask the First Minister is what measures the Welsh Government can pursue to ensure that those who do arrive in Wales are genuine refugees? Well, I mean, first of all, if he thinks that the people leaving Syria are economic migrants, when they have seen pe people butchered in front of them, when they have seen people murdered, where they have seen people bombed, where they have seen children killed. If he really thinks in good conscience, well, he can look down. If he thinks in good conscience that these people are in some way economic migrants, he needs a good, needs to take a good, long, hard look at himself. 
Galwn awr ar arweinwyr y pleidiau holi'r prif weinidog, arweinydd yr wrth plaid, Leanne Wood. Diolch llawydd. First Minister, last week the Scottish Government's Brexit Minister met with the UK Cabinet Secretary for leaving the EU in order to discuss what role the Edinburgh administration could play in the UK's negotiating stance. Two weeks ago in Chicago, you said that Wales cannot afford to be, and these are your words, passive, passive observers in this most momentous of decisions. Will you therefore now reconsider your decision not to appoint a dedicated Brexit minister, or are you prepared to consign Wales to relevance? It is the responsibility of the First Minister to take forward the issue of Brexit, not to offload it to another minister. I will not be doing that. It's my responsibility. Well, I think it's a shame, First Minister, that unlike Scotland, <laughs> Wales will not have a minister dedicated solely to looking at Brexit and nothing else. Now, First Minister, I understand that you established an expert advisory group on Brexit back in August in order to secure the best possible outcome for Wales from the Brexit negotiations. Can you tell us, has that group met yet? My understanding is that that group hasn't yet met, and so please explain why not. Then we have the Brexit Liaison Committee, and I'm the Plaid Cymru representative on that committee, and I'm wondering why no meeting of that committee has yet been held. I've yet even to receive an invitation to an atten attend uh, uh, such a meeting. So, First Minister, isn't the real reason that you've not appointed a Brexit minister and that you've not yet held these meetings is because you've got no plan, you've got no vision and no clue as to what Wales should look like outside the European Union? Well, she sent me a letter last week. I've seen the reply to that letter. I don't know why she hasn't received it, because in that letter it suggested a date when we should meet to discuss these, uh, these issues. It may be that she's not received it yet, but certainly something that I've, uh, I have uh, given my uh, permission to be sent to her. I do not believe that a First Minister should abdicate responsibility. For Wales, see Scotland is not the way forward as far as Wales is concerned. It is for the First Minister to take responsibility in terms of the way forward as far as the EU is concerned. The advisory group will meet at the end of this month. The subcommittee of the Cabinet has already met. The day after the referendum, we outlined our six priorities. I called the British-Irish Council to Cardiff together with the leaders from uh, around the UK, the Crown Dependencies and indeed the Republic of Ireland to start to fashion a response and there's been constant contact both at a ministerial level. I've uh, spoken to the uh, Brexit Minister, we're a long way from agreeing on anything because his view is tariffs don't matter uh, and that those contacts have been uh, kept up throughout the summer. I've also discussed the issue with the Prime Minister personally. First Minister, you say for Wales, see Scotland. It looks more like you saying for Wales, see England. Everything that they do, you were happy to go along with. And your position on Brexit is full of contradictions. Let's have a look at what you said, for example, about a Welsh veto. During your recent visit to the United States, you stated whatever deal is finally negotiated, its acceptance should be subject to the support of the four parliaments that now legislate for the UK. Yet by Sunday, you'd abandoned that view. Now, you don't believe that there should be a veto from this Assembly if the Brexit deal is not a good one for Wales. Will you today justify your decision to submit to Theresa May and her Tory government by giving them the final say as to how Brexit will impact on this nation? She's got the issue confused. Uh, what was suggested was that I wanted the Welsh Government to have a veto. No, I've said that all four parliaments in the UK should be able to ratify any deal. I stand by that. I was the first to say the it. The Assembly should have a and veto. And of course the Assembly should have an opportunity to ratify any deal that's on the table. That and rightly so, because it wouldn't be right for the UK Government to agree issues such as farming and fisheries policy without input from the devolved parliaments because they have no role in farming and fisheries as far as Wales and Scotland are concerned. I think there's practical sense in doing that because if you want to get the widest possible buy-in for any post-Brexit deal, it makes perfect sense if you're the UK government, I would argue, for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland to, get, to give express ratification to any deal. If a deal goes ahead without the support of this assembly or Scotland or Northern Ireland, that deal will, will inevitably be weakened and will not stand the test of time. 
Arwain with a Cadwad with Camrig and Ruati Davis. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Presiding yeah. Officer. First Minister, uh, in recent press reports, and namely this morning, uh, you've talked about your new position on the free movement of people uh, should there be an agreement with the European Union to maintain access to the single market. Uh, you seem to be referring to some sort of period where no movement should be allowed over a given period, such as when the new Eastern European countries came in in 2004. In June of this year, you were very clear that goods, services and people were interlinked and could not be divorced. Is it your position of the Welsh Government now that the free movement of people is not a red line for the Welsh Government and merely goods and services are the points that you are promoting? Well, that's exactly, of course, what many in the UK Government believe. For me, access to the single market in terms of goods and services is a red line. That's something that cannot be negotiated away. I have made the suggestion of the seven-year moratorium. Uh, I think that offers a possibility, as far as the UK is concerned, and probably helpful as far as the UK government is concerned here, in order to maintain access to the single market. But no, for me, it's access for goods and services that is the red line. So for you, and I'm questioning you as First Minister, you are saying that is the position of the Welsh Government, which obviously within that government has a Liberal Democrat member, collective responsibility, so therefore all members around the Cabinet table agree that the position of the Welsh Government does not now relate to the free movement of people, which, as I understood it, was a red line for you back in June. Is that the case? No. Access to the single market for goods and services is the red line. The issue of free movement of people is something that will need to be examined and discussed as part of the negotiations. The position has completely changed, First Minister, and you've signed your government up to dropping the prerequisite that the free movement of people is a requisite that you wanted back in your declaration in June. You also have the agreement of Plaid Cymru supporting you in your endeavours, and so I'm assuming that these discussions have been undertaken with Plaid Cymru, and you are not making these decisions solo. Because what is concerning here, as the answers are slowly coming out from you, is that very often you are appearing on camera and making up policy on the hoof. How are you arriving at the collective response responsibility of the Welsh Government so that your position as the lead on the Welsh Government can be taken seriously when you are discussing these matters in Westminster. You have moved on a fundamental principle here that you said was a red line for you in June that has now been discarded in September and one of your members in the Cabinet has signed up to that who is a Lib Dem and Plaid Cymru by supporting your Government. Does anyone here know what Conservative policy is, either in the UK or Wales, in terms of Brexit? Do you know what they say for Brexit? Brexit means Brexit. Brilliant. Brilliant. What a fantastic leap of logic. I have no idea what his position is on Europe. Absolutely no idea whatsoever. What I can say to him is that all of us around this, this side of the chamber know full well that access to the single market for goods and services is vital for Welsh industry. Will he support that? Will he support that? Will he support you the proposition the that we need to be able to sell in one of the biggest markets in the world, bigger than America and Russia are concerned, without any trade barriers? That is the question that was being asked to me by US investors when I was in the US. If he'd have been there, you wouldn't even have given them an answer. Arweinydd Group UKIP, Neil Hamilton. Well, I'm delighted to uh, welcome the First Minister to signing up to UKIP policy on immigration. We're making progress. <coughs> um, but uh, I, I'm sure the first, first Minister is looking forward with as much relish as I am to the result of the Labour Party leadership election being res, uh, announced on Saturday. Does he agree with me that the election of Jeremy Corbyn as leader of the Labour Party will be very good for Wales? Because in the memorable words of Lord Kinnock, it's very doubtful we'll see another Labour government again in his lifetime. Uh, well, two things I have to say to the leader of UKIP. Firstly, it seems that some, his party his policy is to treat people who are refugees from war as economic migrants. We've heard that from a member of his own backbenches. And secondly, I can guarantee him, I can guarantee him that the party he was once a member of in the 1980s is the party that is most disliked by the electorate in Wales. They remember what he did and his party after that 81 budget, which he was so proud of. They remember what he did, supporting the miners' strike against our own people, shut down our mining industry, shut down our steel industry. If that's UKIP policy, by all means, go out and sell it to the people of Wales.
Well, can I bring uh, the first one to back to today rather than 30 years ago, uh, which is rather more relevant. By the way, uh, Gareth Bennett uh, did not take the view that people who come from Syria are all economic migrants, but the whole point about the law on refugees is you're entitled to refugee status in the first country to which you go for protection from the country from which you're coming, and that in most cases is Turkey. And once they get to Turkey, from there on, they are economic migrants. Would the First Minister first agree with me that that is the law? I mean, no, I, I, don't agree with, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, people will look to, see the, to, to go to the first place they can get to as a place of, of safety. From my perspective, it's important. As we, you know, he is the descendant of an immigrant. All his members are the descendants of immigrants. It's all a question of when those of their families came to this island. Every single one of us in this room is a descendant of an immigrant. It all depends on when our families actually came here. And from my perspective, it's absolutely right that where people are fleeing war and oppression, they get the opportunity in a civilised country, in a civilised country, to be able to live their lives in peace. And that is something I'll never compromise on. Everybody agrees with that general principle and has nothing whatever to do with the EU because we're signed up to international conventions under the UN and the Geneva Convention. And of course it's right that uh, refugees should be given asylum and protection from uh, the countries where uh, they can't live in safety. Uh, but economic migration is a fact of life in Europe. Millions of people are queuing up on the borders of the European Union, uh, which are porous, and there has to be a European solution <coughs> to this. It can't just uh, be left to chance where millions of people manage to get through the system, end up at Calais, are queuing up to come across the channel. There has to be a managed process, but there has to be a limitation because if immigration is uncontrolled into this country, all kinds of social complications are created and the people who lose out most of all are those at the bottom of the income scale, the most disadvantaged, the most underprivileged in society, whom the Labour Party, I thought, was actually brought into being to protect. Well, I'm not going to take lectures from somebody who was a, 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 a Thatcherite uh, trumpet blower back in the, in, in the 80s, but I'll agree with him on one point. It should be a European solution. But the problem is we are now not going to be part of the European solution because we won't be in Europe. That's, that's the issue. We won't have a voice in it. But he's right. It's hugely important this is treated as a, as a European uh, challenge and that all European countries rise to that challenge. Let's not forget that it's within living memory that millions of people were actually refugees within Europe and were moving from one country to another in massive population exchanges at the end of the war and indeed in Yugoslavia in the, uh, in the 1990s. So sometimes we forget our own history. Uh, when we talk about, uh, about refugees. I, I welcome what he said uh, about the, the need to make sure that, that people who are genuine refugees are given uh, help and asylum. I understand the point he makes about uncontrolled immigration. I don't argue for uncontrolled immigration. Of course, there have to be limits on what any country can accept. But we must be hugely careful not to suggest uh, that those people who are fleeing war and are desperate and have seen people drown in the Aegean Sea and Eastern Mediterranean, that somehow these people are simply looking for a better paid job. I just don't buy that, I'm sorry. Question three, Russell George. Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's guidance to local authorities on the procurement of public services? Yes, local authorities are expected to comply with the principles of the Wales Procurement Policy Statement to help maximise the economic benefit of procurement for Wales. Uh, First Minister, the largest privately owned uh, waste management company in Wales, the Potters Group, which is based in my constituency, has been excluded from bidding for a waste management contract in Bridgend County Borough Council because it doesn't meet the requirements of having an annual turnover of more than £50 million. Pounds. Uh, would you agree with me that it's disproportionate to require such a large annual turnover, uh, which, which results in the exclusion of uh, even the largest waste management company in Wales from bidding for these types of contracts? And would you commit to reviewing Welsh Government guidance to uh, ensure that local authorities are, are in, in, these, in this regard to procurement contracts? Well, he raises an important point on behalf of business in his uh, community. If you would write to me with further detail, uh, then I'll give it, of course, the, the attention to detail that the question deserves. Lee Waters. First Minister, there's been considerable progress in harnessing the power of the public pound, but there's still more to do. Professor Kevin Morgan, who is one of Europe's leading experts on sustainable food, has pointed to a skills gap as a major challenge ahead of us. And he's made suggestions about recruiting a dozen skilled professionals to be able to give the Welsh public sector the skilled professionals it needs to further harness the power of that pound. Would you be willing to look into Professor Morgan's proposals? 
Of course, I know there's local authorities. Some have been better than others over the years. Carmarthenshire, for example, historically has been very strong when it comes to procurement. At one point, employing seven professionals just in the one county. Other local authorities have not been as proactive in terms of, of employing procurement uh, specialists. We would expect for the public sector in Wales, of course, to procure locally as much as possible, and that's been successful. Welsh contractors, for example, are currently winning 77% of all major construction awards, and that's up from 30% uh, prior to the introduction of the uh, SQUID approach. And results uh, from the first 259 projects uh, that have uh, taken place, they're worth £1.2 billion, show that 82% has been reinvested in Wales in the last few years. So we are seeing a much, much better situation when it comes to procurement, although, of course, we're willing to look at anything that actually improves the situation further. Adam Price. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I think import substitution is probably going to become uh, even more imperative economically to us as a result of possibly of the, the sort of clumsy and confusing approach to uh, single market access that we're currently seeing from his government. But can the First Minister uh, tell us if the, uh, the kind of advice uh, and direction given to local authorities uh, currently by the Welsh Government includes you know, positive support of things like a dynamic uh, purchasing system, which allows uh, 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 companies, new companies, to uh, 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 supply uh, as part of a contract, uh, even after another organisation has been appointed, and away from the overuse of, of framework contracts and the bundling of, of contracts, which are inimical, really, to uh, providing opportunities to, particularly to small and medium-sized enterprises. It's absolutely right that local authorities should look at unbundling contracts. That was one of the problems years ago where uh, local companies could not bid. We saw it in the health service where it was, it was a combination of trying to, to uh, get in big suppliers and at that time Welsh suppliers weren't, weren't in a position to supply the health service. They weren't able to. That was, uh, that was resolved. Uh, far from being uh, clumsy in, t uh, in terms of the uh, situation on the EU, I think it's been absolutely clear. I'm not entirely sure where his party are on this, but I've been as clear as I, I can be, and I'm sure we, these views will be, uh, will be developed uh, between the parties over the next few weeks and months. The, pub the, procurement public, the procurement policy statement does provide clear direction to the Welsh public sector. If that's applied effectively, then, of course, we can see a positive impact for our economy and our communities. We're seeing that with the, uh, the squid since the squid uh, process uh, began. And we are, of course, committed to helping smaller and third sector firms as well to accessing the public procurement access uh, in Wales. And the joint bidding guide is helping smaller and micro businesses to form consortia uh, to help to bid for those contracts uh, where otherwise they, would be, they wouldn't be in a position to bid successfully for them because of their size and because of the, the nature of the, uh, of the supply uh, needed as part of that contract. Michelle Brown. Thank you, presiding officer. Following Brexit, we will, we will be able to set our own public procurement rules to suit our own economic and procurement needs, rather than the needs of big business in other countries. What measures are you going to put into place to give preference to Welsh businesses when awarding public procurement contracts? And what changes are you going to make to public procurement rules to make it easier for small businesses to compete for such contracts? Well, I think I've answered part of that question, but she's be careful uh, about what she wishes for, because it would also mean that uh, companies from Wales and the rest of the UK uh, would be blocked from bidding for contracts in the much larger market of the European Union, uh, which is not something that we would uh, want to see. That said, hugely important that we can develop a procurement policy further in the future in order to build on the already successful uh, results that we have seen uh, to make sure that uh, more and more money is kept locally. Jenny Rathbone. Thank you, uh, Llywyd. Um, I've just come from the celebration of school meals at, um, uh, hosted by Leslie Griffiths. Delighted to hear from the head of the school meal service for Bridge End that they're pitching for the charter mark for schools for their school meal service, which is what we enjoy upstairs in our canteen. Um, and I wondered what help the um, National Food Procurement Service is going to be able to provide schools so that all schools can pitch uh, for the charter mark, in particular in relation to fruit and vegetables. Only 3% of fruit and vegetables is locally sourced, with the massive um, uh, trade deficit resulting. And um, what ambition, therefore, does the Welsh Government have to ensure all our schools um, have the charter mark, just like Oldham does? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I thank them for the question. But Jen is a popular uh, reference point this afternoon, I can see. But I'm um, glad to hear what, uh, what you heard uh, earlier on today. 
Uh, the point she makes is, is, is an important one. Fruit and vegetables are difficult. We don't produce that many in Wales. We probably couldn't supply all our schools in Wales because of the nature of our topography and our, and our climate. We tend towards dairy and, and meat production. That said, uh, on, in terms of other uh, matters, that can be, uh, things that can be supplied, the National Procurement Service is working closely uh, to improve the food safety and nutrition of all food products. And schools are already delivering nutritionally balanced meals under the Healthy Eating Schools initiative and the NPS will improve the sourcing and ranges available through continued strategic supplier relationship management. Question Pedwar Heaven David. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government support for library services in Wales? Yes, we're committed to supporting public libraries as we recognise the vital contribution they make to the well-being of people in Wales. And since 2007, we've invested some £14 million to modernise over 100 community libraries including a million pounds to modernise and co-locate six libraries in the course of this financial year. Well, Welsh Government support for libraries is welcome, particularly in Caerphilly. We've seen the development of libraries in Caerphilly, Tobago, and Nestor Manach is currently undergoing a lot of work. And I was interested also in the Cabinet Secretary for Economy and Infrastructure's evidence to the um, Communication Committee um, last week, in which he said libraries are more than just about books, but are about a whole load of um, uh, technological um, uh, provisions for residents. Uh, I wanted to ask particularly for an update on Welsh Government plans for an All Wales Library card, which were first published a year ago. Um, I was contacted by a constituent who has a holiday home in Berryport um, and wanted to find place Lee Waters' uh, constituency um, and wanted to use the library there. He was not permitted to join the library and wasn't permitted to use his Caerphilly County Borough card um, uh, there either. I've written to Commander County Council to try and clarify what's going on, uh, but particularly I'd like to know, with the library card scheme, whether that would help, and um, I understand it would also lead to quite a substantial saving for local authorities. These are issues that are still being considered by the Minister. Of course, it happens digitally already, uh, in terms of digital uh, lending, where many, many local authorities participate in the one central uh, resource, uh, but the work is still being looked at to see whether an all Wales library card to borrow physically uh, would, be, would be workable. I suppose from a local authority's point of view, they would be concerned if they're a temporary resident, whether that person could be traced if the book wasn't going to come back. These are not insurmountable issues, yeah, but certainly uh, these are issues I know that are still being uh, examined in terms of seeing whether they're still practical. Darren Miller. Uh, first Minister, will you join me in congratulating the Friends of Kinmel Bay Library, who established uh, a charity in order to take over the operation of the library in Kinmel Bay after it was threatened with closure by Conway County Borough Council? And do you accept that there is a challenge for rural local authorities in particular being able to provide uh, sufficient access to uh, library services simply because of the cost, the additional cost that ro uh, rural local authorities face uh, in delivering public services? And what action are you taking as a government to look at the funding formula to make sure that it's sufficient to resource local authorities like Conway and Denbyshire uh, to ensure that they can continue to provide library services in other communities which might be affected in the same way that Kimmel Bay has been in the, in the future? Of course, a little government funding formula. It has been agreed, but with the uh, WLGA. Uh, there are no plans uh, currently to, uh, to, to instigate a uh, widespread review of that formula because inevitably there will be winners and losers. Caroline Jones. Uh, First Minister, uh, while we welcome your reaffirmation of the Caroline Jones. Uh, First Minister, uh, while we welcome your reaffirmation of the Welsh Government's commitment to library services, your support is of little comfort to those communities who have had their libraries closed as a result of local government ca uh, cuts. We have seen many libraries close their doors for good while others uh, owe their existence to a small team of dedicated volunteers. So what is the Welsh Government doing to ensure that every community in Wales has access to a good local library? The question in terms of what we've done to help 100 community libraries, she will be aware uh, of at least two new libraries that have opened uh, in the area where we both live, Bridgend uh, and in Pyle. Uh, brand new, uh, for, well, re relatively new facilities opened in the past uh, few years, which the local communities are very proud of. And they are examples of libraries that have been refurbished or rebuilt across the whole of Wales. David Rees. Well, following on for that, First Minister, clearly the councillors are facing difficulties because of the Western Westminster austerity cuts being passed down to them. They are looking at these services to provide, and community libraries are one of the ways in which it's happening. You yourself have visited Britain Ferry Library and seen the work being done by the community there. Tybar and Kama are similar in my constituency. But they always face difficult times when they start off trying as a community library. 
what can the Welsh Government do to support those community groups that are trying to take over the libraries and provide the service, particularly, as has been highlighted, the IT element for both adults and children are vital to those communities? No, absolutely. And, uh, we would uh, seek to uh, point them towards others who have um, uh, run libraries successfully, uh, help in terms of working with third sector organisations and the advice that they, uh, that they can give. And we've seen uh, many, many groups, uh, it's been mentioned twice now in the, in the Chamber, that have taken over uh, libraries and have taken that advice and are making those libraries a success. Question Pimp, Simon Thomas. Uh, Rosie Gomi Lewis coaches Dori Ben and the Weather. You would want to keep with on Agos, our Arduola Cleoli, second high book, and I think Bus at Weather, E. or Lewin Camry, and Isle Decre, King Ginted and Fossil. Dorka, Igla Wed, Bodin Bovi, I'd get a key, E. Isle Well, the Gossanath Bus, and I guide wide. He'd no ignore under the Margaret Thatcher, or the Wasanath Bus, in your Gahola guide, E. Aberystwyth, our Vias Hun and Reddig and Vidor, Tan a half Hun. At the Matur Canton, he got the Gossanath Bus. Uh, in your Gachona, Koich and you, uh, either more than you add on, Benchon Weir, Arm of Edwir, than a pre bobble or the Divna the Ben Bendant. We actually really clouded and bobble, uh, so we go over Buvo Noswith and Gaberdin, a Hosman would recover that a train and rehoi regala, a uh, bus Kasul, no, uh, E. Abdusrith, Veshi Panachin Dwight, Buchi Am Well, the Gwasanathama, and I'll Gachwin, Nelchi Dwight Preed, a come half of my Lord with him in the Dio Gelly, put in and dig with. In every near the Gwasanath Yaldachre of Enoth Nosse. Uh, Vin Covey or Buster Hindraus Camry, of course, and Ruth Dege, I would you want to have a sal gwaith. On mana question here, the modern hen, be the Canadian hen and Calapuer and Lina, a Bassia and Nuville in Degoith. Mave, the Bona, Menina, and Ser Avenet, would you go sal cumni and uh, stop or Avetli, Gosquasanet and Cali Gotli? What do you know with Canaliadu? With Ride right, Islas, the Rieda Struth, Bassia, or all Duville in Degoith, and Mosek, I wouldn't have been a fight with. Mi go with the word there, of course, and and Harry Digion. Or the question I say, Vind, Yawn, the question I say, Gummy Justog and Gummy Eris, on a Slidin Parhaigra system, see them well, Gossan I say, and stop by Hassafaith, but Gummy Bassia, the Mandre Deg, Dimragor, Monica system, we can add in there, I will not give a need any of them to live. Russell George. Yeah. Um, the five point action plan on local bus services, which your colleague, the Cabinet Secretary for the Economy, uh, uh, published last week, is very much to be welcomed. Uh, now, bus service support grants have been uh, cut already. Uh, can you guarantee uh, that the current level of funding for local bus services, as outlined um, I uh, last week, can, can, and any additional fund, oh, sorry, so can you guarantee? Uh, the current level of funding for local bus services and outline exactly what additional funding will be available to achieve uh, the Welsh Government's five-point plan? Well, we are considering as part of the budget process what's appropriate in terms of the uh, bus services support grant. What is clear, however, is uh, in the answer I gave uh, earlier, that there are, I have been in this assembly for 17 years, that many, many times bus companies have collapsed and their services have had to be replaced. And the question must be asked whether that's a sustainable system, to have bus companies that, that, that don't seem to be able to make a go of it. Not all, some do well, of course, uh, and the subsequent gap that leaves, however temporary, for uh, the users of those services. We know there are many, many services across Wales that are run by private companies but can't operate with a, without a public subsidy. Now, that, to me, wasn't the intention of his party when buses were privatised. They were meant to be um, in competition with each other. There are very few parts of Wales with any kind of competition. It tends to be uh, one company operating the service under a public subsidy. Now, we have to examine um, how effective that is in the future. Some of them have been effective. Some of them have clearly not been effective, but after 2018, there'll be the opportunity to reassess how bus services are provided across the entire country. David Rowlands. Uh, uh, um, following on from this uh, discussion of bus services in the specific area, I understand that there has been a preliminary assessment of the reintroduction of a railway line from Carmarthen to Aberystwyth. Uh, can the First Minister inform us as to any future plans to institute a full feasibility study, and if so, when? Yes, something close to my heart in principle and others, I know that. <laughs> Uh, the Kamal and Aberystwyth line disappeared as a passenger line in 1964. It was in place in the main until 1975. I remember trains coming through Bridgend Station having come down from Aberystwyth on a Newcastle Emlyn on the spur, uh, carrying milk uh, in, in those days. Uh, in an act of utter stupidity, the line was taken up very, very quickly, uh, and of course that presents a problem. Some of it has been reinstated by, by the Gwili Railway. Um, 
we think that a substantial part of the line of the permanent way is still intact, that there are actually quite very few gaps there. There are still many bridges in place, one or two are missing. Uh, so that assessment has been made, uh, but it's also true to say that there will need to be an assessment on the cost benefit uh, of reinstating the track. It's a substantial cost running into the billions, uh, and that work will, will need to be done carefully in terms of seeing whether, whether uh, that line can be uh, reinstated, and that work is, is ongoing. We've seen it done elsewhere in the UK. We know that Scotland uh, has done it uh, with, the, uh, with the Waverley line. Uh, but uh, as far as this line is concerned, uh, the work will continue so that we have a, a good understanding uh, of the cost, uh, the practicability and the timescale. Question for Janet Finch Saunders. Josh yeah. Howard. Will the First Minister make a statement on bovine TB levels in Wales? Yes, we've seen some real progress over the last few years, seeing a downward trend in new TB incidents. And the latest statistics show in the last 12 months there were 740 new herd uh, incidents reported in Wales compared to 884 in the, tweet, the previous 12 months, that's a decrease of 16%. Thank you, First Minister. However, the number of cattle slaughtered as a result of contracting bovine TB has actually seen a sharp increase of 43% over the past 12 months, bringing much misery and financial hardship to our farmers. I understand that the Welsh Government abandoned its own vaccine programme in December, given the levels of human TB and the lack of um, the shortage of vaccine now available. The FUW has stressed the difference in approach in understanding between your government and the policies implemented in England and without proactive approach to, act, to manage the uh, source of infection and cattle and wildlife, international trade negotiations for Wales could be put at significant risk. Given what can only be described now as a crisis in farming as regards bovine TB, what immediate action are you taking to resolve this? And will you, as First Minister, make a statement in this chamber to the Assembly members and also to our very worried farmers out there in Wales? I would for the Minister to make that uh, statement and uh, she will be uh, keeping the Assembly informed of that. But as I said, the number of breakdowns has gone down. Uh, testing is up. Uh, we know that there are no difficulties in terms of international trade uh, as far as bovine TB is, uh, is concerned. In fact, the eradication programme, which is jointly owned by England, Wales and uh, Northern Ireland, uh, has received £31 million of uh, European money, which, there we are, let's see if that, uh, that continues in the, uh, in, in the future. And so uh, there's no difficulty with the approach we have taken. No country, nor indeed the European Union, has, has ever said that they have a difficulty with the approach taken to uh, reducing TB incidents in Wales. Well, you know, Wachas of Faith, born on Diva, Moch Diar, or or Canol Mas. <laughs> of course, with Indigo, the Moch Diar and Simid. Uh, Mas, I would need other other a client lady Wachas Honey. Uh, Wingo Bod, uh, born on Dia Diad, uh, Gerard Hai Vedo, born at the Bruid, it TB. Skin Kalgal Guarid, Moch Moch Diar, Vetli does not in problem, Gedahi. Marvin Boy Gumneth and Avi, been Kavir, Stara, and Pulkor, a cluid, a testioleth, or the Nadangos, but Boreshaw, Moy Gumleth, and Budim in a tab. Ond, of great and need to go and fly hard to the Igor Sawi, of course, and an Iver or on a Villet, so we call it Brovi, Geda, Geda TB, and Mohanan Rubethi Mongwell and Parhai and Pendrow. Question Scythe Nick Ramsey. Adiel. Will the First Minister provide an update on tax devolution? Yes, we're on target to deliver the devolved Welsh taxes and collection and management arrangements. And from uh, April 2018, uh, we will be able to do so. But that will depend, of course, on the agreement of a fiscal framework for Wales, which is hugely important. Uh, thank you, First Minister. As you know, I've supported the, the fiscal framework. I was pleased to attend the Finance Secretary's meeting with the new Chief Executive of the Welsh Revenue Authority last Thursday to discuss the process of appointing the Chair to the new organisation. This is clearly going to be one of the most important new ro roles in Wales in recent times. Tax devolution will only succeed, First Minister, if the public can have confidence in it. And clearly, uh, at the moment, very few people are even aware 
uh, that it's happening. How are you ensuring that we get the right quality, the right calibre of candidates to apply for this new role of the WRA? And how is your Welsh Government publicising the whole devolution of taxation so that when it does happen, start to happen in 2018, the public are, are fully aware of what's going on with their tax bills? There will be a communications plan as ever. We did this, of course, with the uh, Human Transplantation Act, and we saw the, the effects of that, where the vast majority of people were aware of the legislation and aware of its, of its contents. Uh, the Welsh Revenue Authority will be hugely uh, important, of course, in terms of being able to uh, collect a tax that is fair, robust and, above all, can be collected uh, and cannot be avoided uh, very easily, and we understand the, uh, the need to, uh, to do that. Uh, so I, I've got no difficulty uh, in, uh, in believing uh, that uh, we will have a sufficient calibre of candidates uh, uh, from who, which to choose the, uh, the Chair of the Authority. Mike Hedges. Yeah. First Minister, do you agree with me that it's of prime importance in devolving any taxes is that Wales suffer no detriment from the devolution of those taxes? And will you uh, press the, for an independent arbitration to resolve disputes with the Treasury? I don't want to sound pessimistic, but I have a feeling that we may end up with the odd dispute with the Treasury, and the Treasury acts as judge and jury in that, that case. We're likely to come off second best. So if there is going to be any disputes, we need some form of fair arbitration. I, I agree entirely. I mean, one thing I can say to him, that the Secretary of State for Wales uh, knows and indeed understands uh, that the support, any support for the, for the Wales Bill will depend on a fiscal framework being in place. It's no good having that and then having the fiscal framework. Scotland was given that courtesy. There's no reason why Wales shouldn't have the same level of courtesy. And he's right, of course. At the moment, the dispute resolutions process within the, uh, the JMC is such that if there is a dispute with the Treasury, then the dispute uh, rolls on until eventually it's decided by the Treasury. Uh, and so there is no uh, third party involved. I made uh, arguments at the time there should be an independent panel of arbitrators. Uh, that's not something that the UK government at the time were prepared to, to accept. There are, of course, models elsewhere. In Australia, there's a grants commission uh, that acts independently in order to, uh, to arbitrate between states and between states and the federal government. There is no reason why that, this can't happen here. We just need to make sure that the Treasury understands it can't be judge and jury on everything. Nathan Gill. <clears throat> Thank you, President Officer. First Minister, I have a solution for you with regards to the communication of the tax raising powers which you are going to be getting. Now, the vast majority of people, if we are honest, have no idea that this is coming down the track towards them. There is a way for you to let people know what's actually happening and also for you to be able to have a communication two-way with the public, and that's to give them a referendum. Now, don't go blaming costs and all the rest of it that I know you normally do. Do you trust the people of Wales? Will you have that discussion with them? And will you allow them to have their voice heard? Oh, it well, is genius. I, Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful to the member for his advice. He won't be surprised that I don't accept his advice. I think a referendum at a cost of £4 million would be uh, particularly of help, given the fact that political parties in their manifestos uh, explained their position to the people of Wales at the election in May, and the people of Wales took a decision in terms of what they wanted to, uh, what they wanted to do. Uh, this is an issue that's properly decided at an election, and the people of Wales uh, gave their views. Question oi, Thelina Morgan. Will the first, first Minister make a statement on the measures being tackle, uh, undertaken to tackle childhood obesity in Mid and West Wales? Yes, we have introduced legislation, policies, and a range of interventions to improve diets and increase physical activity. Uh, but, of course, this can't be done by government alone. Uh, it is something that we are tackling together with a wide range of organisations. Diolch. Dwi wedi cwrdd â cyfarwyddwyr iechyd cyhoeddus dros bwrdd iechyd hywel ddan ddiweddar, a mae hi wedi cadarnhau fod ar olwg diweddar wedi dangos bod 28% o blant hyd at 4 oed dros bwysau. 28%. Mae hwnna yn ffigwr anhygol. Mae adroddet arall yn diweddar wedi dangos bod 3 chwarter o blant yn pryden yn cael llai o amser tifas yn yr awyr iach na phobl yn ein cyrchardau. Ydych chi'n cytuno beth eu werth chwil i gyflwyno mecanwaith i fonitro pwysau plant wrth iddyn nhw fynd trwy'r ysgol a hefyd i fonitro eu gweithgaredd corfforol fel yr awgrymodd Tani Gray Thompson yr ysyn os diwetha. Well, one of the goals of the RAN or the Lagia Donaldson save great but purpose at this e sicrhau bod plant yn iach uh, yn hyderus uh, ac wrth gwrs bydd hwn yn, uh, yn rhan o'r gwaith sydd yn, yn uh, sy'n mlaen ynglyn â'r cwricwlwm newydd. Bydd, bydd iechyd 
yn rha a hefyd wrth gwrs um, gweithgareddau corfforol yn, yn gynolog i strwythu'r uh, cwricwlwm uh, newydd. Ar hyn o bryd, mae'n nawr i chwech y cant o ysgolion yn gweithredu dragon sport, er mae'n sicrhau bod plant rhwng saith o 110 uh, yn uh, neud uh, chwaraeon, a mae uh, ma'n weithwyr uh, ym mhob ysgol uh, i hybu uh, iechyd, uh, a mae hwn yn uh, sef pob ysgol sydd yn rhan o'r rhwydwaith o gynlluniau ysgolion uh, iach, a mae nhw yn cefnogi uh, ffyrdd newydd uh, o sicrhau bod mwy o mwy o blant yn, uh, yn cymryd rhan mewn gweithgareddau corfforol. So, gwaith wedi cael ei wneud, ond mae'n holl bwysig bod uh, iechyd ag addysg corfforol yn gynolog fel wedi si uh, i'r dyfodol, a mae bydd hwn yn rhan o cwricwlwm newydd. Cwestiwn nawr, Angela Burns. Thank you. The question <laughs> now, question nine. Question dig, Bethan Jenkins. I'm not a prig when he dug that gun yet, and the brother who he bred big your arhenir and humri. Yeah, Mark and Sawyer did in your tether, Thessal, and no dear mini prava, so for now, Gavel, I did with you. Diolch am yr adeb hynny. Falle bydd y prif mwyn i dogodd iddo'r debi o bod pan oedd ni allan yn rhedeg yng nghastell nedd yn weddol ddiweddar. Nes i bron cael yn uh, gythio mewn i'r gamlas gan beic, oedd yn mynd yn rhy gloi ar hyd yr un trac ac oedd yn un rhedeg. Ac felly y cwestiwn dwi'n cael yw gan um, fod na rhannu rhwng bicio a pobl sy'n cerdded, dwi wedi cael pobl yn ardal y mwmbl sydd yn mynd yn anaml, lle bod na bicwyr nad sydd yn cymryd mewn i ystyriaeth a pobl hynny sydd yn cerdded mewn tod. Os mae'n lot o bobl yn ardydd, sîl er enghraifft, sut mae nhw wedyn yn gallu fod yn uh, sensitive i'r hyn sydd yn digwydd yno, gwmpas nhw'n hydrach na ceisio mynd mor gloi fod nhw'n mynd ar ben mynydd hynny yw. Beth ydych chi'n gallu gwneud o ran addysg i sicrhau bod pawb yn gallu byw yn yr un fath o amgylchfyd? O man oedd yr etswyr ar feicwyr i sicrhau bod ddim yn, yn teithio yn rhy gyflym, uh, lle bydd nhw'n bwrw rhoi'n, well, of course, bydd, 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 bydd yr bai yn ein nhw. O un o peth sy'n digwydd y mwmbl, a fe'n fi'n nabod y llwybr yn dda dros ben, wedi bod yn fel y baig sawl gwaith, yw'r ffaith bod yn cerdded yn, yn llwybr y, y baigiau. Nath oes dyn yn tywyddoli hynny. So un o peth sy'n creu fi'n braid neud yn y pen draw, sicr hae lle ma na llwybr i faigiau a llwybr i gerdwyr, felly bod nhw'n gwahanol llywiau. So mae bod yn deall ble mae'n fod i gerdded a ble mae'n fod i faigio. Ond dyw yna ddim yn cymryd y dyletswydd o faigwyr i sicr hae bod nhw'n rhydio baigiau mewn ffordd sydd yn yn gyfrifol, a sydd ddim yn, yn beryglus i bobl eraill. Diolch, prif yn eidog. Eitem nesar yr agenda i'w'r dytcaniad.